Jesus said, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you invited me in. And when I needed clothes, you clothed me. When I was sick, you looked after me. When I was in prison, you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer him and said, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and gave you clothes? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for the one of the least of these, my brothers of mine, you have did for me. Early in November of 2012, our church started this initiative called Project Gabrielle. Project Gabrielle is an, our first outreach with Victory, and we're working with House. My name is Donette House. I just go by House. We partnered with a local nonprofit organization called Gabrielle's Place. It is a shelter for homeless women and their children. We adopted 11 single mothers and their children, and our church came together to provide for them food during the Thanksgiving season. I was just really blessed by the overwhelming response by our church. On that morning, we saw people coming in with bags of, of groceries in their hands, and one after the other, people poured into the church with boxes, mashed potatoes, dumping all kind of food all over the lobby. We had young ladies on our volunteer team just stuffing boxes and baskets in the gym on their hands and knees. We had bins of turkeys and men rolling wheelbarrows out, and we seen children running around, and they were happy, they were smiling. The director, she was just, I mean, she was just over and just blown away by, by the tangible love of Jesus. I think one of the things that touched me the most on that day, just seeing the smiles on the faces of the children. What's your name? The relief on the faces of the mothers to see a lot of them shed tears on that Sunday, to see them crying and weeping. A milestone in our church that we will never forget. Project Magi, our second outreach. Um, it happened in December of 2012 in which our church uh, came together to present gifts to a local orphanage of children who were separated from their parents and uh, had no means of having gifts for Christmas. And we also adopted two families who had medically challenged children and who were also in a position financially where they were not gonna be able to provide gifts for their children. And so uh, we presented Project Magi to the church and um, we created these ornaments and attached to these ornaments was the name of children, their age, and what they had wished for for Christmas. I remember watching and seeing how our church, once they heard about Project Magic, how they stood online to take their ornaments off the tree, and we watched as some families took two and three ornaments. In the following week, um, when we seen just a humongous outpouring of gifts coming into the church, I mean, people bought above and beyond. We went back to my home and volunteers wrapped those gifts by hand, and then a small small outreach team to travel with myself personally to deliver those gifts. The first place we went was the Georgia Mentor. We delivered gifts for the children that's in the orphanage there. They could not believe um, the overwhelming amount of gifts that come. I mean, we had a trunk full of gifts for those children in that orphanage. And then we had an opportunity to deliver a second load of gifts to these homes. The first home we went to, it was a single mother. She had two children and one of them was medically challenged, a little baby. We went there and she had such a great spirit. God really allowed a miracle to happen on that day. One of her relatives came right there in that home. She gave her life uh, to Jesus. She shed tears. No greater gift could she have received around the holiday time than the gift of salvation. But following that, we delivered our last little gifts to this mom who had a daughter challenge. Uh, you can see that she was, she was tired, she was hurting. We had an opportunity to pray with her. She held on to us and she wept. And I think for her, what she needed during the holiday season was just a hug, reassurance that God had not forgotten her. Those, those outreaches um, really had a very serious impact on the lives of those people. When we was in the launching phase of our church, I remember one occasion we were traveling uh, through downtown Atlanta and we came across a bridge. I had stopped them, I signaled them to stop the car. I had saw something that caught my attention. We got out the vehicle. There was an entire community of people uh, living under a bridge. They had no food. We had an opportunity to minister to them uh, and to pray with them. And there was just one woman who I would never forget. We held hands with her and we prayed and she prayed and she wept 
and, and the last thing I said to her, I looked in her eyes and I, and I made her a promise, you know. And I said to her, I said, oh, we don't have a building, you know. Uh, we don't have, we don't have a budget. Um, we don't even have a physical church yet. But I, I said to that woman, I made her a promise. And I said, um, I promise you, that once our church starts and we have some more resources, that we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna come back and uh, we're gonna help you. We're gonna do something to help you. And I made her promise that we will return uh, to help you. That's what I said to her. I said, we will return to help you. You know, we have a real burden in our hearts for our city. And because of that, next month, February, the month of love, we're gonna be launching our most aggressive outreach project yet. We've partnered with several Atlanta-based organizations and next month we're going to be feeding the homeless. We're going to be planting gardens for people who can't afford to go into a grocery store and buy food. We're going to be building homes for people right now who have no shelter. And we're going to return back to that bridge community where it all began for our church to keep our promise to those people to help them. And I will be so honored if all of you who support us in any way would partner with us by praying for us as we prepare to paint our city green with the tangible love of Jesus.